Hello. We're here to talk now about how to write an engineering CV or resume. And I'd like to show you today some of the basic elements that would go into an engineering resume or CV. So let's take a look at that and see what we have on the screen. First of all, of course, you would have your name and your contact information. Contact information would include street address, telephone number, and email address. And it's important to distinguish between your home phone and your cell phone, the reason being that potential employers and recruiters and networkers will more likely call you on a cell phone because they have an idea that they can get in touch with you more easily. So after that heading part of the resume, if you look over here, you'll see the professional summary. Now that's a paragraph, three or four sentences, that really talk about what it is that you do in general, not specifically what you've done at a company, but what you've done in general. You should also include in this any certifications that you have, such as Lean Six Sigma, you may be a green belt or a black belt, or you may be a certified quality engineer, any of those industry certifications that are very important these days. This is where they would go is up in the summary. And then after you've written your summary, then you would start with your specific professional experience. So for example, right now we're looking at a person who is a manufacturing engineer. And the very first thing we would put is the most recent company where he or she worked and the city and state where that is. And then over to the right would be the years. We don't use the months in a resume, just the years. So say from 2004 to 2009, if the person had recently been laid off. And then again, the specific title, in this case, manufacturing engineer, it's very important to include the exact title that human resources would verify. That is the same title that would appear upon your business card if you had a business card from that company. Underneath that, we'd like to see some description of your responsibilities. We call that a responsibility statement in resume writing, which really provides the background and the context for the job. What is it that you did within that job or were required to do within your duties and responsibilities? And then underneath that, as you'll see in our sample here, is specific accomplishments that you have done in that job. So, for example, project manager for the 250,000 retooling upgrading of the automated packaging lines. Now, this tells the reader that you were in charge of retooling of a particular package line. The worth of it was 250,000. And if you could include some results in that, what happened as a result of you being in charge of that project, that is certainly to your advantage as well. So the idea is to be as clear as possible, again, the duties and the responsibilities of the job, and then how you performed against those duties. This is what we call a chronological resume, so your most recent job would be first, and then going backwards in time to other jobs that you had, obviously, prior to that. Now, in our example here, this person was a manufacturing engineer manager at a different company, so we have the company and the town and the state and then the years when he worked there. Now he had two different titles in this particular job. So you'll see next to manufacturing engineering manager, there is a year right next to it. Now that's the years that he held that title. The other years, the 1994 to 1999, refer to the entire time that he was employed by that company. So it's important to distinguish when you've had more than one title in a given company. And again, the same process applies. We would like to see specifically what did you do within the context of that job title in terms of saving money, increasing revenues, improving performance, whatever it was. Obviously, say for a quality engineer, was there an improvement in quality based on what you did? And we move backwards in time through previous jobs that you've had and then end up at, depending on your relevant skills, you may want to include those as a separate section. So, for example, in this particular resume, we have several different certifications and trainings that this person has gone through, including Kaizen, which is a Japanese method of improving workplace performance, 5S, value stream mapping, visual factory, many different methodologies that engineers use to improve performance. 
And then last but not least is education. In this case, this person happened to be a chemical engineering graduate of Worcester Polytechnic Institute in Worcester, Massachusetts. So what we would put here, actually it doesn't say completely, we would put BS, and then a comma, Chemical Engineering, Worcester Polytechnic Institute, Worcester, Mass. You will see 1982 here. It's really your choice if you decide to include the date or not. Frankly, if you're an older person, we recommend that you leave the date off. Only because some folks do have a desire, if you will, to bring in younger people, frankly, because if you've worked your way up the ladder, you're more expensive. So they are sometimes looking for somebody who can come in and do the job a little bit cheaper. So that's just one reason we recommend that if your degree is more than 20 years old, that you may want to just leave the, the date off. That is pretty much it in this particular manufacturing and process engineer, but again, remember, chemical engineer is another kind of engineer, quality engineer, aerospace. So be sure to include your specific certifications, your specific training, and always, again, how you have applied that training and put a background to your job. For example, if you were a baseball team and you were looking for a second baseman, you would be concerned with their fielding percentage, not their batting percentage. So in a way, the philosophy of resume writing is to say, this is what I was charged with doing, and this is how I did against that charge. And that's what we mean by a responsibility statement, those lines or two that would occur underneath the job description. And then underneath that would be specific bullets that would talk about how you did, again, against those responsibilities. And actually, in this particular example, we don't have those responsibility statements in here, but I did want to make you aware of those. This is a resume that's in process right now, so we will be doing some further work on this before it's ready to go to market, so to speak.